This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's one of your recommendations. A smaller company from Europe that's growing into a bigger company. It's Odoo, open source ERP software. We've got the story, how they grew, a little bit of venture capital, great big valuation, and where are they going next this week? Odoo. Today it's an open source ERP software company that's been 15, 16 years being an overnight sensation. It seems like it's come out of nowhere, but it started in 05, and here we are 2021. And it started when the founder, this guy, Fabian Pinkayers, bootstrapped the company back in 2005, and he called it Tiny ERP. Then later he changed the name to Open ERP because he didn't think his tiny ERP corporate clients would take the branding seriously and away it went to Open ERP. Anyway, he bootstraps the company way back in 05 and in 06 he was fast iterating. He built version 1, 2, 3, and 4 in 06. Now at the time, this young Belgian company was a services company providing ERP. Well, it was about, you know, four years into this in 09 and 10, where they decided not only do we need to step away from services, but we really be, need to be known as a software publisher of ERP. And the race was on, and this is really the birth point for Odoo as we know it today. And they brought accounting and invoicing, project management, inventory management, e-commerce, HR timesheet, all is ERP. So usually I cover the money first, but I really wanted to cover this bootstrap, this early point where he hadn't taken any money. He actually had managed to do it with some early customers using a freemium model. You can use this much for free, and according to the company, they, get, they allow you to use about 80% of the features free, but the next 20% of the really cool high demand high impact features that really help your business, these you need to pay for. So you kind of get addicted and you kind of like it here and being open source, you were able to do some modifications for yourself, but you didn't have to be a technologist to do it. Matter of fact, the goal of Odoo in early days, Fabian said, I want people without large numbers of technical people and technical staff needed to be able to use my software. But at the same time, it's open source and be able to modify it. So kind of a creative balance between you could do it yourself without a lot of technical help and the power of open source where you can do so much with it. So let's step back to the money. In about 2010, from Softanova Ventures, they raise a $5 million Series A. That's five years after the company was founded. Then they would raise a Series B of $10 million in May of 2014. But in between the two rounds, they actually won an award from Deloitte, which was like one of the top up and coming companies in Belgium. And I think there was an award for like number one company in Belgium in their software space, which is really amazing. However, I have to say this, the best thing to come out of Belgium was not Odoo. Number one, and this is on my board and somebody wrote it here, so it must be correct and it must be official. Number one, the best thing to come out of Belgium is Spa, Floor and Champs Racetrack. The second best thing to come out of Belgium is one half of Max Verstappen. Remember, his mom's from Belgium. And the third is Odoo. So with credit to Odoo and with all due respect to Fabian and his team, you are the third best thing to come out of Belgium. But number three ain't bad. So then they raised this money from Softanova after getting the award from Deloitte. So they're really on the map here. And then in 14, right about the time they raised the money, that's when they changed the branding to Odoo. That's also why there's the perception here that they're like five years old overnight sensation. Well, really, they had a nine-year head start before they rebranded as Odoo. So for those that weren't in the ERP space or a company just coming in to use them for the first time, the perception is, wow, check out this new company Odoo I haven't heard of. Look at all this amazing stuff on ERP that they have. And wow, this is really amazing to work with. Well, it wasn't that easy. It was nine years of hard work that got them there. And let's look at how hard. Remember I mentioned version four? Well, version five was in 09, version six was in 11, version 6.1, version seven, and version eight were in 2012. They were quite busy, and they won an award from Deloitte just a year later. And then they changed the branding to Odoo. So if they changed the branding to Odoo, they were actually between version eight and version nine of their software, showing that they're an established company, making new releases, and building it better for the companies that want to be using it. Version nine was followed by version 10 in 2016, version 11 and 17, version 12 
and 18, version 13 and 19, version 14 in 2021. And if you go to the company website right now, you'll already find feature sets and teasers coming out and developer pre-support for version 15. This is a real software company making mature software that people can use without a lot of technical expertise, without a big technical staff to take advantage of all this ERP. Now, who are they competing with? They're competing with these guys, NetSuite, SAP. As a matter of fact, they bought this website called Sorry SAP way back at the beginning of it, but they haven't posted anything on it because they don't want legal fees. Probably smart. So I left off at Softanova here, and you'll notice the venture phage I have here, because let me tell you what happened next. They built up their valuation, and then Summit Partners came in with a $90 million round, but a bunch of that money went back to Softanova to buy Softanova out. So they ended up buying out some of their previous investors, putting some money in the bank and limiting their dilution. BizDoc should do a whole case study on limiting dilution because when you can pull off this trick and get money and buy out early investors who are very happy because they're taking their money off the table at a huge multiple probably, 90 million coming in, they probably took four, five, six multiples. They probably took 50 million for 10 or something like that, but it's probably bigger than that. This year, Summit did it again, a $215 million round at a $2.3 billion valuation. So it may have been 15 years in the making, but their unicorn status, and the only thing to say is that is, damn, that is an ugly picture of a unicorn. But the $2.3 billion valuation, every bit deserved by Odoo, raising 215, which they said in their release materials, resulted in the full exit of Softanova. Softanova happy, Summit happy. They're the only cat in the barn now, and, Oh, do happy because with for low dilution, no dilution, and that's what was stated in the press, that they really didn't have hardly any dilution to do this, maybe even zero if you're reading between the lines, and this was a full exit, but you end up with money in the bank, a new best friend called Summit, a happy former investor called Softanova, and you're off to the races. And when I say off to the races, I mean you're off to the races as an overnight sensation that's been 16 years of hard work, sweat, and toil getting there. And go to the website and read the little diary that was put together by Fabian himself. He takes you through the diary and the story of Odoo. It's a great read for those of you who are entrepreneurs, where they run in a t-shirt company in Berlin or a technology company in California. It's a great read. And during part of it, he says, I almost ended up homeless thanks to some bad luck with the, the investor and some bad luck with the market. I already had the dog, so being homeless, I had the dog, so I was almost on my way. There's some of this that it's very tongue in cheek, but very funny. Go check it out. Which takes me back to today. We have Summit with the money in the bank. They have $190 million in revenue right now annually. They have 30 official modules. And I'm talking about the 30 here that are all modules and submodules that are part of this very traditional ERP set. Then they have thousands of community modules. Remember, they're open source. So they have a community of developers. And so the unofficial modules that people can sell to each other and make available to each other for free under open source rules is thousands of modules. And maybe that could be HR for a particular industry. It could be project management for particular types of project. Accounting and invoicing, taking into account the different nuances of different industries. Multiply it together, you've got thousands of community modules for people that want to use Odoo, but then find out things that make it special and perfect for their industry. Total users, and this is phenomenal, 7 million users and 10% of them are paying users. So let's take a look at that. That's the freemium model. Free, paying premium. 80% of the features available to the for free, 20% of the, of the important features, the ones that are high demand features, the highest utility and highest benefit features you have to pay for. They say they have been profitable since the beginning, which we assume is version one, two, three, four, back in 2006, and they've been profitable off 10%. So that's a very important thing. As I go right into the lessons, freemium can work if you if what you're able to get from the paying users 
is enough to run the company. And in this case, it was only 10%. And they offer pricing per user per month. So maybe it's 20 or $25 per user in your company per month. And at 25, that'd be 300 a year per user. Then on top of that, they charge you smaller amounts for the actual modules. When you add it up, you're paying for the software each year on the premium model, and they're making enough so that they can keep running the company with support and everything so that one day you don't wake up and Odoo is out of business. That's the balance you want when you're looking at a new, younger company and you're going to put ERP in place for your company. You got to be sure that they're going to be in business. And since they've been profitable since the beginning, they've got unicorn status and money in the bank. Safe to say that after 16 years, Odoo isn't going anywhere but up and to the right. Lesson two, bootstrap to profitable if you can. This is a great example of where you were able to bootstrap it to profitability. Now, bootstrapping, he better have some realistic amount of money. I doubt this was $50,000, but he had enough to make it work. And what you could do bootstrapping to profitable is like you may be running that t-shirt company in Berlin and the first shirt, you're actually making a profit on that shirt and then sell enough shirts to pay for the printing press and a little bit of space. That is the that is the walk to profitability. And it always is great to bootstrap to profitable if you can. Sometimes with software, you can't. You have to build the team together and the team's expensive and you gotta go find investment money, whether it's seed, bootstrap, or some early investors like angels, which is the step before venture capital to make it work. Then later, buying out investors is not impossible. Something was in the documents here so that Odoo, when Summit came in, could be buying out the early investors and all they have to give them is a BIFSOM. What is a BIFSOM? It is a big sack of money. That is what a BIFSOM is. And it's where you give a big sack of money from here to here, but are able to see something in the bank to grow your company for tomorrow. So I think these lessons are really testimony to Fabian Pinkares and his team there in Wallonia, Belgium. What's a Wallonia? A, what's a Wallonia? The cameraman wants to know. Wallonia is not a what, it's a place. It's a little district in Belgium. Belgium's not very big. If you ever go over there and visit, just ask them where Wallonia is. Nonetheless, what Fabian and his team have been able to do over 16 years is fabulous. I love this case study for a lot of reasons and not the least of which is the profitability since the beginning. Well, that's what I think about Odoo, but what do you think? Leave some comments down below. I answer as many as I can. And while you're there, subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get information of the greatest content on the internet for startup entrepreneurs, executives, or business people just like you.